Hello everyone and welcome back to Agent of Gash, which is a channel dedicated to Age Sigma. And in this video, we are going to be returning back to the Army Archive and we are going to be starting the series for the Maggot Kin of Nurgle. And this is because they won the most votes in the, um, you know, What Army Next video um, I put up there. There's quite a few votes for other armies. However, the Maggot King of Nurgle votes were overwhelming in comparison. So, we are going to be looking in this video. It's going to be the Maggot King of Nurgle law. And essentially, we're going to look at a couple of things here. So, we're going to look at who are the Maggot King of Nurgle. And when we do that, of course, we have to look at Nurgle himself, the grandfather of disease, pestilence, and all those other nasty little filthy things that come up with a bounties of his love and then we'll also have a look at the garden of nurgle because that also plays a very big part of what nurgle stands for so looking at the grandfather nurgle so nurgle is the chaos god of plagues whose power waxes strong when disease and despair ravage the mortal realms through he is a source of fear and revolution to his enemies Nurgle is perceivably a parental god, generous with his foul gifts, proud of his worshippers, every disgusting achievements. Nurgle wishes to see rot and contagion bloom across the mortal realms, drowning the bastions of his enemies in a tide of putrid filth. Yet Nurgle is not malice, far from it. Nurgle, the god of plagues, delight in futility and the overabundance of life that disease and decay brings. To Nurgle, every rotten corpse is a welcoming nursery for wriggling maggots and queen plague spores. Every stagnant lake and rotten forest is a paradise in which parasitic larvae and bountiful poxes can flourish. These are the gifts that Nurgle lavishes upon the mortal realms and if there is malice behind his generosity it is directed to only at those who are too ignorant by declining his generous offers. Nurgle's physical aspect is truly hideous. He is a swollen mountain of blubber and pus whose necrotic flesh crawls with abupals and sieves with the lice. Filth and foulness drool from the rotten moor that dot its corrupted mass, and flies the size of boulders a buzz around him in thick cloud drawn by his stench. Since before time, Nurgle has been in competition with his siblings, the other dark gods. In their great game, Nurgle is typically ranked third most powerful behind Corn and a devious Zeech. Yet this is a misleading notion, for in truth Nurgle is in no way inferior to his brothers. Rather his might surges and recedes in a never-ending cycle. When a plague and pestilence run rampant, Nurgle becomes so swollen with power that he levery hide struggles to contain it. When reminiscences come, and Nurgle's plagues full follow, so his power wanes until he becomes hollowed out shadow of his former greatness. Yet Nurgle is never defeated for long, because for disease and decay are inevitable as time and tide. Unlike the other dark gods, Nurgle is a more in a positive relationship with the great horned rat, the verminous skaven deity who joined the Chaos Pantheon at the fall of the world that was. An architect of plague and pestilence, the Horned Rat seems a natural ally of Nurgle, and certainly the two gods find a common cause on occasion. Yet where Nurgle wishes to spread bilious life, the Horned Rat seeks only the ruin of all. With no thought for new life or creation as a result, Nurgle looks down on the vermin god as short-sighted and distasteful, more of a means to an end than a true ally. When the Age of Chaos began, 
Nurgle set his sights on the abundant realm of life known in its true tongue as Gairan. His armies spilled across the Jade Kingdoms, corrupting everything in their path. Thousands of mortal tribes turned to Nurgle, worship in order to save themselves and their families from his countless plagues. The Sylvan F and their Queen Alaria were driven into hiding and for a time Nurgle stood upon the very cusp of victory. Yet for the last moment when all seemed lost to the forces of order within Gairan, an alliance between Sigma Stormcast Eternals and the resurgent Sylvan F defeated Nurgle's greatest champions. Alaria was sealed the Genesis Gate and through which the greatest portions of Nurgle's might had flowed into Gairan. For a time, Nurgle wallowed in the disappointment of rejection, and as he did, so did his armies, were driven back on every front. But now the plague god's optimism returned with its realisation that in obsessing over conquest of Gairan, he was being selfish, all of the mortal realms deserve the benefit from Nurgle's generosity and the means to make sure that they are allowed with his a blessing until they can take no more. And that is sort of like a summary of what the grandfather of Nurgle is, a very caring um, one of the dark gods. Not through malice does he show his power, but instead through gifts. Now, one of Nurgle's many great places and his most known creation is the Garden of Nurgle. The Garden of Nurgle is the plague god's domain within the realm of chaos. It is a festering jungle, forest, swamp and ornamental parkland in which unclean life seethes and sickness blossoms with epidemic intensities. No living being save the worshippers of Nurgle could hope to survive within the plague god's garden. Its winding paths are run with diseased slurry and scribbling worms, while the air is thick with monstrous fumes and the constant drone of flies unnumbered. Groves of fetchland normals jostle with a bloated fungi and stinking fever blooms. Sickly light spills from floating spore sacs and drift through the murk, trawling slimy linears and pus-fat fawns. Everywhere mucus strips, insects scuttle, and the acidic gases bubble and pop. Fountains of mouldering bone rise from stagnant lakes. Jetting putrid slop from squealing spots. Meadows of grass like rusted blades creak and groan in the languid breeze. Spruing clouds of seeds that would rot mortal flesh in seconds. As the Nurgle's power oobs and flows, so the boundaries of his garden realm expand and contract. When his might is at its peak, the Garden of Nurgle bursts in extensual bounds and surges into the territories of the other Chaos Gods. Plains of fire blackened skulls and fractal crystal mazes are swiftly overrun by the Garden's predatory ferocity, turning all to bountiful filth. The Chaos Gods are ever at war, for they fight as only immortal brothers can. Each maintains countless armies of demonic soldiery with which to defend their own domain. While invading those of their brothers, Nurgle is no exception to this trend, and his garden teams the commanders and foot soldiers of his demon legions, patrol bands of plague drones from along the garden, myriad paths, seeking invaders to torment. Tides of putrid nurglings scamper through the rotted undergrowth, intent on mischief, whilst packs of slugs like beasts of nurgle sliver and slop amidst 
the marshy pools, searching for unfortunate playmates. Fortresses and guard towers of rancid boulders and corroded iron loom over seething gallow trees, garrisoned by plague bearers who watch for hardy intruders to punish. At the heart of the garden stands Nurgle's manse, the dark gods a number about propulsorous fastness, whilst pilgrim thick tunes he gathers ingredients for the latest plague each new madly is brewed to perfection in his immense cauldron and then tested on the cursed creature known as poxacrum a caged being that has endured millennia of miseries as Noah's personal test bed only once he is satisfied with the results of his concoction does Nurgle unpen the cauldron, raining new contagions down upon the mortal realms. Okay, so that is, you know, a little bit about the Garden of Nurgle as well. So, you know, it sort of talks about where it comes from. Very lovely place, lots of life, very abundant there. You know, lots of little like play animals that want to, you know, have some fun. And then here's a little bit of a story um, that goes into that as well which we've got from the Bastome. So, in the middle distance, I saw a great fortress, half hidden by a misera of decay that infused its very structure, rotten and medrulled, where its timbers and its sagging roof was thick with infestation of every conceivable kind. Poison poured down the walls of the most revolting of abdodes, polluting everything about, yet despite its state of decay, I sense an inevitability about that unhollowed a bastion. I knew beyond doubt that it would have stood for years uncounting in the same ramshack form and would continue on until the very end of time. Before the fortress gates stretched a fortress of death, Corpses thick with unbridled decay lay about as far as the eye can see. Here death was feeding off the dead. This was the garden of chaos. Vile creatures nested amongst the bones of the dead, there to gnaw at the fallen and fill the air with sickly sounds of merriant. Here dark trees had petrified their shapes indescribably and their essence corrupt the graves of the fallen had become a rich loam sucked upon by the trees of the dark forest pierced by the tree roots the dead had stirred once more and each brand of bore a skull a mild rude and heavy with loathing in that place I looked upon the fate of mankind and wept for the future. So that is a nice little insight of what it's like to have a little peek into the garden. So, you know, maybe not like jump into the deep end of what the garden's like because imagine there's a lot of acid there and like it says it can melt mortal flesh this is more of a sort of like you know looking through the keyhole seeing what it's like going maybe that's not for me maybe that's something for me to think about or maybe that's something for me for just to open the door straight away and just to head straight in so if you are one of those people who want to head straight in there to either join Nurgle or learn how to beat him I hope that you enjoy the series that is yet to come um, for the Maggot King of Nurgle forces as this is the lore video for them. And to summarise Nurgle for you. So essentially Nurgle is, out of all the four Chaos Gods, he is the god that is the, in his own mindset, would feel the less of evil. And I sort of talked about already how he doesn't see himself as being malice. And that's because everything he does, I think he produces, is all to try and help out um, every type of creature in the mortal realms. He just tries to give some gifts. He tries to, he sees a life is a precious gift, the most precious gift out of everything that exists. And he just tries to multiply how much life there is. 
and try and give as many little creatures, no matter how big or small, as much as a chance as any other out there. And that is why he is looked upon as being a grandfather um, to his followers rather than just some uh, other great deity like Corn or Zeech, etc. So that is Nurgle. Like I say, even the interesting thing about Nurgle, even like the big beasts of Nurgle, I simply want to play. They're not really interested in like purely just going to kill something and just that's it. They want to play with them. They want to bestow even their gifts they've been given by Nurgle upon um, their new friend. And this would be in the form of disease, a virus, a plague, a pox, just to help spread the life that they are all so bountiful for and grateful. So that is Nurgle for you there. I hope you've enjoyed this lore video. I hope, like I say, you're looking forward to, to the rest of Nurgle. It's quite interesting, Nurgle, as I have got a Tamakan Horde army. When I say I've got a Tamakan Horde army, I've got 1,220 points of Tamakan Horde. Doesn't sound like a lot. Incredibly expensive because it's Forge World, but I traded it with an Ogre army or something, so that's how I got it. Um, I need to paint it up. I painted a one model for it, which was a Bile Troll. Really, really fun to do. Um, actually, really did enjoy painting that. And that was before Contrast Paints came out because that's a while ago. Um, I might go back to it at some point during this series to sort of keep the theme up there and uh, could be really cool and really fun. And yes, and there's quite a bit to explore with the Nurgle as well. Not as much, I don't think, at the moment in time as Gloomspike gets just because that army was absolutely massive. So hopefully this series won't go on for that long. Um, but I'm going to see what I can do this series. I may potentially be doing a um, more smaller video, so I might be doing a video for each war scroll but it'll be a shorter one similar to how i did flesh eater courts but not as in depth because flesh eater courts is just under 600 minutes worth i think yes yeah, so this won't be as long as that because i don't have all the time mod but i might do that or i might just go like here are all the demon units um in one video here are all the demon heroes and then like other video again here are all the rock bringer units and here are all the uh, rock bringer heroes something like that um, I might do. We'll see. If you guys got any preference, please let me know down in the comments as that really, really does help uh, give me an indication what you guys like to see. It's the same as the video I did when I say what armies would you guys prefer and then you let me know in the comments. It really does help me indicate what sort of content you want me to produce. Um, like I say, really fantastic. And if you didn't vote for Nurgle and you wanted your own army, like again, I can only apologise, but I do say it's going to be the majority of people who vote for the army wins it really and that's how i'm going to do the order of the armies for most things um just because i'm going to review every army in age of sigma by some point and i need some sort of system to get through and i think it's fair isn't it if i ask and i do understand that some armies like i saw those gut busters and seraphon that doesn't have as many votes um as nurgle and didn't have as many votes as um, the army I reviewed before that, Gloomspike gets when I... So this armies that are never really going to get the majority of votes for me to be able to review. So I might surprise one time and go, you know what, it might not be as popular, but we'll do it now to make those people happy. But in the terms of gut busters, I am quite hopeful that they will get a new battle time at some point. Um, because they were not updated in the General's Handbook 2019, as far as I'm aware. And they put that on the article. Because they said gut busters are just as good as they've always been, so don't worry. Doesn't really mean anything. I'm not saying gut busters can't be good. For heaven's sake, in a tournament I had uh, Nagash die to a Ogre Tyrant in one turn. And that was turn one. So, yep, that can happen. However, they're not the most tabletop. So, well, it might be best to say there's arms to men. Anyway, I'm going off topic here. But I suppose there's Plague Ogres and Tamagon Horde. So Plague Ogres, Ogres, gut busters, you could convert them. Put them in Urgo Army. There we go, back on track. So, guys, like I say, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you are very keen on Urgo, uh, let me know down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts if you've got an Urgo Army. Again, please send me um, photos if you have got an Urgo Army so I can put them on the uh, videos going forward. And uh, it'd be very cool to see um, how you painted them. Now, Nurgle for me is one of those things where it's quite an interesting army. It's like an army I wasn't really a fan of at the start because I didn't really like how this, basically how disgusting it all <laughs> looked. But it's it's grown on me as the Garden of Nurgle ever expands as Nurgle gets more powerful. And I think that is very much the case. Okay, guys. So, like I say, I thank you very much for watching this. If you did enjoy it, remember to like, subscribe, comment down below. That has all massively helped me. And I am... 
Taking note of everyone who has subscribed lately has been a bit of an influx. That's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, greatly appreciative. If you'd like to support me a step further, I have now got a Patreon account, and this is a way for me to get um, source income to the channel, which helps towards saving up for bigger things like camera, better microphone, that sort of stuff. Also, things like just buying bastatones for each army I do, because like I say, I have got a Tamakin Horde army. However, um, I didn't really need the Maggot King of Nurgle Battletone for that army um, when I bought it, but I got the Maggot King of Nurgle Battletone so I could review the Maggot King of Nurgle in this series as you guys clearly uh, wanted me um, to do so. So um, that thing's just, it all really helps towards getting uh, Battletones and stuff like that. Really, really um, does support me a lot. And also just for me to be able to justify putting time to the channel and stuff like that. But anyway, guys. Um, on that note, I would like to thank my four patrons that are tier um, two, which is the vampires. And this essentially means they donate at least five dollars a month to me. And this has massively helped me all the time for all those reasons as I stated. Hey, basically the money they've put in has helped towards a buy-in and that Maggot King of Nurgle Battletone. So I could review it for everyone out there who wanted uh, this new series. So this is going to be to uh, Martin, Max, Carl and Simon. So again, guys, thank you very much for your donation. It does massively help towards all those things like I've said and um, keep up your great support and if you cannot support me on patreon that's absolutely fine um, i just wanted to thank you very much for watching this video today and hope to see you in the next one and until then remember nagash is all and all is one in nagash <laughs>